Today I want to talk about uh, Manette trumpet mouthpieces and let's be controversial. Uh, if these mouthpieces cost $20 each, everybody would be playing on them. If you look at the criticism of Manette equipment online, it's nearly always based on price or revolves around price rather than what the mouthpieces themselves do. So um, I've got some opinions on these mouthpieces. Uh, I have been playing on and off on Manette equipment for about 18 years, uh, probably since the end of the 20th century, so I've got a fair bit of experience. I've also played uh, Manette trumpet, so uh, I can tell you something about them, and uh, I'll show you my current setup, I think that's probably the easiest way to explain this. The first trumpet I ever had in which I used a Manette mouthpiece was... Um, a Taylor Chicago Custom and I'm afraid the reason I bought my net mouthpiece was purely cosmetic. I had been using uh, Bach Megatone mouthpieces which are heavy mass mouthpieces but uh, when I bought the Chicago the uh, to get a mouthpiece that looked correct in the big wider receiver I was able to get hold of uh, Monette B15 uh, and it was a STC2, which is the heavyweight type, which is used on Manette trumpets. And it fitted and it worked incredibly well. Incredibly comfortable mouthpiece to play on. It just fitted, everything worked great. It had a 17 throat on it. And I'll talk about that issue in a minute. But this is my current setup, which uh, will, I'll start with these ones probably. Let's see. Yep. This is uh, Monette. B15M S12 B flat trumpet mouthpiece for lead type trumpet playing I use this which is a B4 LDS1 uh, just to get these sizes in comparison this mouthpiece is equivalent to a Bach 1X or thereabouts but if you look at that hole through the middle I don't know what size of throat this is, but I'm guessing it's something like a 17 or a 16 drill size through the middle. Uh, these are not Prana mouthpieces, these are classic ones. This is the standard resonance, what they call resonance blank, and this is resonance lightweight. And you can see it's got a bit less mass on it. This B4 LDS, this is... Uh, I believe based on uh, Mount Vernon types 3C or rim but obviously the rest of it is completely different so uh, that gives you an idea that's my B flat trumpet mouthpieces I'll put these out of the way and then on E flat trumpet and this is quite useful to see they don't come easily out of these boxes this is a very old E15 um, and that is the classic shape of uh, Monette mouthpieces that you probably will be familiar with. You'll notice that the E flat mouthpiece is a lot shorter than the B flat and if I had a different B flat, a standard like back B flat mouthpiece you'd find it was longer still. Um, and that's one of the differences with the Monette mouthpieces. Each mouthpiece uh, is made for a specific key of instrument. So they make piccolo trumpet mouthpieces in A and B flat. They make E flat, D, C, um, B flat mouthpieces. And this is the fourth mouthpiece that I have here, which is a Prana resonance. And this is a B14FL. Uh, and if you look at that, this is actually more like a flugel or a cornet cup, something along those lines, um, on a trumpet shank. Now, it's all properly balanced out. It's got a huge throat through the middle. Um, I bought this one used. I wouldn't normally have bought the Prana for this purpose, but I was able to get this at a very reasonable price, and uh, I use it occasionally for different things. The difference in the rim between the B14 and the B15 is that the B14, four, roughly the same diameter, but the one four is slightly flatter. Um, it's almost like a Dennis Wick 2 cornet. If you have ever touched one of those or played one of those, you'll know that slightly flat profile. 
uh, but it's pretty well compatible with the 1.5. So, um, another thing about Monette sizing is that they have various large mouthpiece sizes, which is the ones that I'm most familiar with. The most popular of the larger sizes is the B2. The two rim is what Wynton Marsalis plays on. They advertise it as being like a one and a quarter C. In reality, it's I think it's closer to a one and a half. I had lessons from a teacher who played Monette 2 and he insisted that the one five was too big. Uh, he tried to get me to switch to a two and I just couldn't do it after a period of time. It just didn't work for me. Uh, I think because of my lip shape and everything else, I'm comfortable on this uh, 1.5 rim. The 1.5 rim is not dissimilar to back 1C. The uh, 1.4 is slightly flatter. The 1.1, 1, 1, which is a very popular orchestral rim, um, is a little bit like a current back one. It's a much wider mouthpiece and it has a semicircular rim which means that it feels even the bite is quite far towards the outside so it feels even bigger. I have had one of those in the past so um, I currently don't have a Manette cor cornet mouthpiece. I have one on order which is a B15 FL R6 so it's a little bit like this type of cup but uh, sorry, this type of cup, but it has, um, it's in a slightly different configuration. Um, they, they make a newer type of cornet mouthpiece, which uh, I'm quite interested in trying. I have used their cornet mouthpieces before, and you will see very old videos of me playing on those on this channel. Um, I also don't have a, a piccolo trumpet mouthpiece at the moment because I changed uh, instrument to one with a different shank. There's, I've shown you the classic, which is like this. There's also the Prana. The original Prana looked like that, uh, but it had this brushed appearance. The difference between the Prana mouthpieces and the classic mouthpieces is that the, I believe the Prana mouthpieces are uh, tuned slightly high on the pitch centres of each note, um, which allows them to do various special things in the way that they configure it. Um, I have found in the past that Prana mouthpieces don't work too well on some conventional trumpets and that uh, the classics work better in some or others. Now, that's something that you've got to try out for yourself if you can. And this comes down to one of the difficulties is that in the UK, the only place you can get these is, as far as I am aware, is Phil Parker's. They don't keep the complete range. So you're going to have to import and trial and error, and trial and error on mouthpieces that cost a couple hundred quid is not easy. So my advice would be to buy second hand. This one cost me £75 second hand. If I sold it today, I'd get my money back. So it, it's possible to get a Monette mouthpiece and not pay a lot of money. Don't worry about the shank. They'll always be worn. It's the rim and any denting in here that you need to be careful about. If you look at the Prana mouthpiece, it has a razor sharp edge on the bottom there. This is very thin. Um, I have to say that the, if you compare that to that Soprana, and this is a cla the classic, both in the resonance blank. I don't know if you can see that, but it's the Prana is considerably uh, thinner at that edge. And this is the reason for these cases. These cases are designed to suspend the mouthpiece uh, so that the, the uh, central bit of the shank is uh, less likely to be damaged. Now I've got two different cases here. One is larger than the other because this one was for STC3 mouthpieces which I used to use on my uh, old Manette trumpet. And it doesn't grip the mouthpieces particularly tightly. They should be gripped more tightly than that. And uh, this is the correct case for the standard manettes, which uh, really do grip uh, pretty well. They're also quite good because they have this bit of elastic on them so that when you flip them, they go closed or you can hold them open. So I do like these cases. Um, I've always been keen on The different blanks that are available, classic. There's um, a lightweight. It looks a little bit like this, but not quite like this. Then there's the newer Prasenet, uh resonance blank which is like this and I think this is a significant move forward 
uh, in terms of tone colour and vitality of the sound, um, the instruments speak very easily on this. It, it really is a huge step forward. So the advantages for me, they also do an XLT blank by the way, which is a very lightweight blank for lead trumpet playing. I've never owned that. And obviously the piccolo trumpet blank is different as well. So what are the advantages of playing on these? The first thing I would say is that they require a relaxed approach to playing. If you're the sort of player who muscles in on every single note, you will probably find it quite difficult to adjust to these. If you're quite a relaxed player and you use your ear well, the, the, these work very well from the get-go. But if you are um, a more muscular type of player, you're probably going to take longer to adjust. And there are adjustment guides from Manette uh, on how to do that. Um, the main advantage is what they call constant pitch centre. People misunderstand what that means. If you pick up your trumpet and play a note, and you start to play louder and louder and louder on that note, just a long sustained note, you will find that the pitch tends to drop. With these mouthpieces that's extremely unlikely because they are pitched to be uh, closer to the edge of the note so that, and the additional mass gives it support so that uh, the tone is unlikely to uh, change in frequency. A simple explanation as a lay person, uh, what's going on here. Also, each mouthpiece is tuned to the length of the instrument, so these B-flat ones are slightly shorter than a conventional B-flat mouthpiece, and the C mouthpiece is a bit shorter, and the E-flat is shorter again. Some people say that's complete nonsense, but uh, as you go up in register, there's a tendency for most trumpet mouthpieces to go flat in the upper register. These don't. So once you're playing in a relaxed way, and you're playing into the pitch correctly on these mouthpieces, the biggest advantage for me is stamina. I can play for much longer periods of time on this equipment than I can on others. What people say is that it increases their range. I haven't noticed that, but I've already got a good range uh, on just about anything. So really, it gives me a bit more reliability of pitching notes perhaps in the upper register, but I wouldn't say that was the selling point. For me, it's actually the ability to express yourself on the instrument, produce the tones, they speak so easily they articulate so well that uh, they want to make they make playing generally easier. So if you were going to pick a Monette mouthpiece, I think the way to do it would be to pick one with a rim very close to what you are currently playing on. So if you're playing on one and a half C, you probably get a two. You can get a second hand one quite easily. Be very careful as there are fakes about. They seem to originate from South America. They are mm, quite difficult to spot unless you know what you're looking for and I would recommend buying from an authorised dealer which is going to be Phil Parkers in London if you're British or direct from Manette uh, who do a very good mail order service but I should a say that I have played on Manette trumpets I played uh, on a P3 which was made for me by Manette um, I would still be playing on that if it wasn't for uh, having gone through a divorce and not being able to pay the rent I can honestly say that uh, using these mouthpieces, a uh, huge step forward uh, in terms of my own playing. Now, those of you who know me will know that, well, you've got another set of mouthpieces. Well, I do. I've got a set that's based on Mount Vernon 3C, and this is because I have a bit of dental issues and occasionally I have to play in smaller mouthpieces. But in general, this is mouthpieces. what I'm playing on. I believe they are worth the money. I think these, the, they're coming in around about $350 maybe. But when you consider that my cornet costs £2,800. Now, spending 10% of the value of the instrument and the mouthpiece is probably not a bad idea, you know? Uh, it's up to you. But uh, as I've said before, second-hand mouthpiece, you can try it out. 75 quid. My E-flat mouth uh, trumpet sounds fantastic on this. It, it, it really does. And uh, big orchestral sound from these bigger mouthpieces as well. But they make lead mouthpieces uh, of all types that, that really do the business for people who need that. So thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful. Um, you can leave any questions or comments. Um, if you want absolute uh, facts about Manette equipment, I suggest that you look at the Manette website um, or give them a call because they will explain it all in absolute per perfect detail. I can only tell you what I think and, and what my experience I would has been. I heartily recommend uh, Manette, you give Manette mouthpieces a go if you possibly can. So thanks for watching 
and see you next time.